Hello. For this video, I wanted to show you or demonstrate to you something that a lot of people would find to be quite extraordinary. And that is, you see 12 different complete entrees here. Each one has a meat and it has um, rice or, or pasta or um, any variety of, of things that I have put together. And with the exception of these two right here, Everything that was freeze-dried in all 10 of these, I freeze-dried in one batch, okay? I had on two of the four trays, I had six pounds of very lean, it was, I think it was 93.7 ground beef. And in two of the trays, I had another six pounds of very lean pork. And so I had a total of 12 pounds, but for the pork, I used one and a half pound sections. So I was able to get four out of that. And out of the first two trays with the hamburger, I was able to provide the meat for six complete meals. Aside from that, I wanted to demonstrate something else. Some of these meals in here, like this one here, the unprepared hamburger helper stroganoff. Okay, this stroganoff required that I have milk added to the package in order to complete the recipe. It is unprepared, and so when they open it up, everything needs to be in this package to completely make the hamburger helper. And so I have uh, hamburger in one end, I have dried whole milk, then I have, of course, the noodles and the seasoning packet and the instructions are all inside of here. So when the time comes that I ever need to feed myself and my wife, and there's, you know, we've been Venezuelanized, I can come down here and grab this one pack, and all, she, all my wife will have to do is come up with some bread or, or whatever else she can to add to this, and we've got an entree for dinner, okay? And I make these up for dinner. I make them with breakfast. Um, I'll cook sausage and eggs together and, uh, and put them in a package and everything. So I, we've got breakfast. And a couple of these... I also have uh, vegetables in. Um, that would be this one here. This, of course, is, is rice aroni, um, stir fried rice. It's cooked pork and vegetables are included in here. Of course, you don't need any milk or butter or, or milk in here. You do need some butter, and I've, I've mentioned that up here in the corner that this requires two tablespoons of oil or butter. But other than that, everything else is in here. I have some meat, I have some vegetables, and I have the uh, the rice aroni seasoning packet and the rice and everything. The main point of this demonstration is to show you that sometimes I will do a batch of certain things that I'm going to use a lot of along with something else I'm doing. Uh, for instance, these vegetables, I did a full batch of onions and peppers, kind of a stir fry mix or a fajita mix if you will, and I put them in these jars and I don't seal them up tight because I know that I'm going to use them. And so for two of these, I use this here, and for four of these, I use milk and I use butter. Now, this butter here is freeze-dried butter. I don't freeze-dry it myself. It's too difficult. So I buy the number 10 cans of Augustin Farms freeze-dried butter, and I opened up the can and uh, transferred the contents into this jar, and I use it quite often. So I do have things in my pantry that are not intended and sealed for long-term use. Sometimes I still need them dry. I still need to be able to put them in packages for long-term use. But um, for this one, uh, like I say, this came from Augustine Farms. But when I do milk, I do a gallon at a time. As a matter of fact, right now, my freeze dryer is drying a gallon of milk because this is just about empty. And that means that the last gallon of milk I've used, I've used on, in several different places. And so that's what I have here. Now, while all this was drying, this batch was drying, I was looking around in my pantry and I found a case of partially used macaroni and cheese. And I, I, I love macaroni and cheese. I, I grew up on this stuff. <laughs> when I was single, that was, that was a staple in my diet. But I decided that since it was past its expiration date, which when you're freeze drying and when you're vacuum packing in Mylar bags, the expiration date pretty much goes out the window because... Um, what it is that causes an expiration date is the fact that things are not packaged to be protected from oxygen. And it's oxygen that is the great destroyer, and it's oxygen that causes uh, people to have to put a Best Buy or an expiration date. And so my macaroni and cheese was um, 
expired by several months. And so I decided that I needed to vacuum pack it. Now, what I did was I took each box of macaroni and cheese and I opened it up and I put it in a quart uh, bag along with the cheese sauce. And I was sure to, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a hole there. I put a hole all the way through the bag so that the bag would evacuate when I vacuum packed it. And then I also put three little holes across the top here so that this bag would evacuate. And then I'm able to fold the bag over and, uh, and put it here. And now I'm able to put two boxes of macaroni and cheese in each one of these. This one's finished and this one's packed and been vacuum packed is ready to go. But the instructions for macaroni and cheese call for butter and milk. Okay, so all I had to do was turn to my uh, butter and milk that I've already had prepared and stored in my uh, pantry and I was able to take these bags here. Now, in previous videos, I've always said that I don't use anything but 7 mil Mylar bags. But um, I have to qualify that because these are 4 mil bags. They're real thin, they're resealable across the top, and they've got that open window. Now, I've tried to heat seal these. I've tried to use these before with seasonings and, and stuff like that. And it just, for some reason, these don't hold a vacuum. They don't hold a vacuum very well. I guess I'll, maybe I'm just not doing it right. But I did discover that if I open these up, I was able to put enough dried butter and milk. And this is like, I, remember I said this is whole milk. Now I've got a lot of um, store-bought and commercial pack dried milk, but it's always fat-free. Okay, I've got enough, I think, for 50 gallons in there, but uh, it's fat-free. So I like to keep on hand, and I like to freeze-dry a gallon of whole milk with full fat, and it, and it does wonderfully. You don't have to worry about it. It dries, and it dries really well. But um, I put enough in here to meet the needs of the recipe, along with the instructions. Okay, so I have instructions here that I put in each bag, and the instructions say, Milk and butter mix for one package. In other words, I have two of these envelopes sealed in here, but for one package. And it says add one half cup water to a small bowl and mix to a smooth consistency. Add to drained hot macaroni mix and then add the cheese sauce. And the reason I do that is not everybody sometimes may not comprehend that you don't just dump this in with the macaroni and cheese while you're cooking the macaroni you need to reconstitute this before you use it. And so there I've got my milk and my butter and I'm able to fold that over and I put that in here along with those instructions. And so I have two boxes of macaroni and cheese in here complete with milk and butter. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I keep these gallon jars again, like I say, is because I will dehydrate things in anticipation of using them in my food storage uh, program later on when I uh, freeze dry something else. And so I'm going to set these aside right here and we're going to go ahead and package up this macaroni and cheese the way that I've done it here. Okay, so I take it all and I've labeled the bag. It says two boxes, instructions enclosed, macaroni and cheese, no meat. And that's something that I also, I, I put meat in so many of these that when I don't put any meat in one, I have to mention on there that there's no meat in this particular bag. Okay, so I take that and fold it over and I will put that right. They don't always want to go easily because they are a pretty tight fit. I find that in these smaller bags, um, these smaller Mylar bags, they're just wide enough that you can fit those, um, these bags here. And I'm able to push that right down into the bottom. Okay, I don't know if you can see that there, but it fits right into the bottom. And then this one goes in right behind it. Okay. Now that I got the first one in there, the second one always goes in easier. Okay, then I take the two packages of milk, solids, and butter. And uh, I, sh you sh I should note that freeze-dried butter um, from Augustine Farms and, and just about any place else um, doesn't have the milk fat oil in it. It's, uh, it's, it's separated out because of the fact that you cannot freeze-dry oil. It just, won't, it just won't happen. I also include in the instructions in here, there's a, a piece of paper um, that says you can replace 
these if you have whole milk and real butter that you can use with these um, you don't have to use these but I'll put these in there and I'll add the instructions okay and oh and by the way there is a oxygen absorber in each one of these so I don't have to add an oxygen absorber to this and I'll go ahead and seal this up now when sealing this up it's important that you don't have any wrinkles in the bag and let me tell you a little secret something I discovered to help avoid any wrinkles in the bag if you put that on there and then start to clamp it down without sealing it this end of the clamp will grab the bag enough and leave this side of the bag a little bit loose that you can look over here and you can adjust it and then if you want if you pull on this this side and pull it along a little bit it'll stretch that bag out and if there's any wrinkles in it um, they'll go away and then you seal it down all right and now if you should see that that is a uh, a near perfect seal it's nice and smooth it's all the way across and I don't have to worry about it leaking so now I need to vacuum pack it and now I use a special uh, device a setup for myself and I'm sure if you've been following me that you've seen it before but I even have a video that shows how to set that up so that you'll know what I'm doing okay so I'm going to cut this right across here and there's a picture right there a close-up picture of what I've done and um, now I'm going to put the vacuum needle into the little cut opening there and you can see it it's going in and I, I push it in along the side then I clamp down on it I try to make as smooth a wrinkle free clamp as I can with my fingers and then I turn on the vacuum pump and you'll be able to see this thing vacuuming down and it and it vacuums down tight it vacuums down a lot tighter than a seal -a meal or food saver uh, device ever will uh, my wife loves our food saver device she uses it a lot but it's just not something you want to use for long-term storage it doesn't get hot enough to seal these bags anyhow but you can see that bag now everything that I put in there that bag is just downright hard okay I'll leave the, the pin in there the needle in there for about 30 seconds because the fact of the matter is that when you're sealing these things as soon as you you see the bag stop um, gathering around the contents that doesn't mean that the inside of your bag is completely vacuum yet you can I can still draw um, quite a few millitores of vacuum out of this even though it's um, it's stopped it, it looks like it's complete so I will maintain the, the vacuum process and because of the way I do this that bag is sealing around this needle and it, and it, and it won't leak and it works gosh it works really good okay so when the time comes that I feel that it feels like it's got a really good vacuum I will take and I'll put my finger and my thumb over that and I'll yank this out really fast and I'll hold that opening closed now one of the the neat things about a mylar bag is it will tend to seal itself it'll close itself the vacuum will actually close that little hole uh, for a few seconds without leaking through but I'll put this down and I'll smooth it out with my fingers and I'll make sure that there's no wrinkles on it because now I got to put this on the impulse sealer and I got to seal that corner off there you go now that little hole that I made here in the side has been completely sealed off and this is ready to go and so now I have two so there's two macaroni and cheese dinners in here complete with the milk and the butter and this one the same this one I have unprepared Zatarans red beans and rice with um, cooked beef I have two of those. I have a Zatarain's um, uncooked dirty rice with uh, ground pork in this one and this one. On this one, I have the, of course, unprepared hamburger helper stroganoff. And this one has the milk in it, the milk and the butter. And so does this one. 
This one is the unprepared rice aroni stir fry. And this one has cooked ground pork and vegetables, as, as does this one. And this one is unprepared hamburger helper. Um, four cheese lasagna with cooked beef in this one. So there you have it. I've got a week's worth of entrees here or more. And each one of these would feed four adults, five adults if you reduce the portions. And so, and this is basically one batch with the exception of the milk and the butter, or I, the, the, I don't do the butter, but it, with the exception of the milk that I do in one batch. And milk, milk happens very quickly. Milk will happen in uh, less than 30 hours, okay, to where my average uh, freeze-dry time for beef and meat products and other products uh, that I do is anywhere from 45 to 60 hours. So for milk to do it in 30 hours, that's, that's really good. And you don't always need to freeze dry the main course. The macaroni and cheese is already freeze dried. Um, it's already dried. And all you got to do is make sure that you pack it right. And if you're prepared, then you have your milk and cheese. Or you have your, your, your milk and butter. So that's, that's the way that, that I like to do things. It's called critical thinking. It, it's called being prepared. Um, and doing things the way that you would have wanted them done 20 years from now um, when you actually have to start using this stuff, you'll, you'll be thankful that you did. So go ahead and hit that, the like and the share and the subscribe buttons and, oh, and visit my gallery. There's the address. I'm a professional photographer. I'm sure you all know that uh, if you've been watching my, any of my other videos. I'm, I'm rather proud of my fireworks and my water drop photography so if you if nothing else i'd very much appreciate it if you'd visit my gallery uh, make a comment and uh, oh and by the way as always if you have anything that you want me to freeze dry and you want to see how i would prepare it and what i would do to prepare it for long-term storage let me know in the comment section perhaps i'll be able to um, to do something for you and maybe it's something i haven't thought of and it would be a great experiment. I'm, I, I love learning new things, so go ahead and do that. And with that, I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking.